Hey, what's going on guys? This is Brad with Spike Fitness and it's time to talk about the, uh, the Thor 501 pull. So, um, as you're probably very well aware, Half Thor did the, um, the attempt to break 500 uh, kilos yesterday um, on, uh, on Saturday, um, May 2nd. And um, he did it. So, in the event that you haven't seen it, which I doubt that, but in the event that you haven't seen it, here, check it out. Okay, so, um, you know, Half Thor went and, uh, and did it, uh, which is great. You know, uh, I don't think that there was really anyone that thought that he couldn't do it. Um, interestingly enough, he, he only pulled the 501 and then stopped, right? He decided not to go any higher uh, than the 501. Um, initially, I had predicted that he would pull more than 501, right? And try to put a little bit more of a, a distance on that, uh, on that record. In this case, he opted not to do it. In kind of reflecting on that, I thought about like why he might not want to do that, right? So like certainly him going for that five that 501 uh, mark to break the 500 kilo uh, deadlift record was a paid event for him, right? So Hathor uh, stood to earn money by breaking 500 kilograms. So if he broke it by one kilogram or by 20 kilograms, he wasn't going to get any more money in this in this event, right? So um, whatever he was going to get paid, he was going to get paid as long as he exceeded 500 kilograms. Um, and so at least what I think, just by looking at it, I think the 501 wasn't quite as easy as he was hoping it would be. Now, don't get me wrong. I, I feel like it was a, a magnificent pull and he did, he did well. Um, he, and it certainly, I think, looked better than Eddie Hall's 500 kilogram pull. And we'll circle back around to that here in a little bit. But um, I don't think it was as easy as he thought it was going to be. And then certainly, like I said, um, you know, in, in terms of the, opportun uh, the opportunity to earn, this was the potential for a big payday for him. Now, I, I don't know what all was involved in terms of sponsorship money or whatever else, purse that people might have been offering him. Um, but but Half Thor certainly stood to earn you know, a hefty paycheck by cracking the 500 kilogram deadlift record. Um, but like I said, there wasn't going to be any more money in, in it for him if he went, you know, 505, 510, 520. Um, there's just, I think he was going to earn whatever he was going to earn as long as he cracked the record and that was it. So by conserving that and saving it for another opportunity at another time to um, go and try to pull it again and break it at a different point in time, he has at least set himself up for the opportunity for another payday. Um, so if he maintains his strength levels where they're at right now and, and kind of the specificity for the deadlift and decides at some, some point in time when everything reopens that, hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to break my own record and I'm going to crack, you know, 520 kilograms or, or whatever it is that he ends up going for, he has the opportunity to earn more money. And so um, I think that, that that aspect of it can't be ignored. One, the thing that I thought was really interesting about the, the deadlift wasn't so much that he did it because I, I, I think everyone kind of expected him to. Um, it was the comments after. So um, listen to the things that, that Hathor said in the wake of the, um, of the event. How does it feel to be the first human in history to pull more than half a ton? It feels great, you know. And not only did I pull, you know, this incredible weight, but I also just feel great afterwards, you know. <laughs> I'm standing here tall, feeling good no injuries um so and i'm healthy as well so you know <clears throat> i believe today i could have done more but what's the point how far what is next for you ah uh, wow something new and big you know core sports just offered me a seven bigger contract um which is the biggest contest of my life. I've signed it already. At the hall has been running his mouth now for some weeks and I know that he got the same deal, same contract. So, Eddie, and there's the camera, Eddie, I know, you know, I just knocked out your record and now I'm ready to knock you out in the ring. Time to put your fists where your big mouth is and sign the core sports contract. 
Okay, so what Half Lord was getting at, right, is really just a dagger uh, at the heart of Eddie Hall. You know, talking about, you know, he's healthy, he's on his own two feet. Um, I mean, so that was, you know, for all intent and purpose, that was calling Eddie Hall a bitch, right? So I pulled more than you pulled, and I didn't fall, I didn't fall over. Um, so I thought that was particularly savage of, uh, of Thor. Um, you know, he had said it leading up to it that I am going to pull it and, you know, no one's going to have to carry me away. You know, I'm going to be on my own two feet healthy, um, you know, but then to kind of echo it again in the wake of it. Um, and then uh, and then immediately call Eddie Hall out for this this boxing match that they've had planned. Now, the the boxing match talk came up some time ago. I mean, something as much as three months ago, even really before the the, uh, the deadlift uh, record attempt was being talked about. There was some discussion about this boxing match between the two because there's been bad blood for these guys since 2017, essentially. And so I, I just think it's interesting that Half Thor, you know, calls Eddie Hall out, uh, wants to wants to get this thing going. Again, um, tremendous opportunity because, you know, Thor says that, he, you know, he, he basically got a seven-figure contract for this. I mean, so we're talking at least a million dollars, um, potentially more. Um, and so, you know, it's a huge payday opportunity for for Thor, irrespective if he wins or loses. Same thing for Eddie. I think, you know, the, the earning potential that these guys have for different events, especially for strongman type stuff, is nowhere near that kind of uh, that kind of purse. So it's certainly a, another great money opportunity, um, earning opportunity for these for these two guys. Um, I think personally, um, I think I, I think Eddie Hall probably has the advantage um, in this case, um, you know, with the swimming background, um, being a little bit more focused on some of the fitness and stuff, I think that will help Eddie, um, survive rounds and have the energy to keep going. I think certainly as big and as heavy and as strong as Thor is right now, you know, the big, heavy, strong is, is an advantage, but only to a point, um, and carrying that much mass and, and, and trying to get through a fight, it's pretty intense. So it'll be interesting to see how half Thor changes his, his training. Uh, now in the wake of this deadlift and prepares for this event between he and Eddie Hall, um, I'll be really interested to see what Thor uh, ends up doing. Uh, certainly, I think he's going to have to get lighter and going to have to amp up his uh, his endurance in order to be able to survive. Otherwise, I think the boxing match will be a really interesting 30 seconds, um, minute or so, and then I think I think more or less they'll be pretty much gassed out. Um, but. I'm, I'm hopeful to see what these guys can do with their training in preparation for this. And certainly with that much money on the line, um, they're bound to put some, some time and energy into it. So that'll be very interesting. What was also interesting is some of the chatter and things that have come along um, out of the, um, of the event itself. So um, I happen to see this, uh, this YouTube post by Chad Wesley Smith. Where he says some of these things. Here, check this out. Um, to comp Compare it to Eddie Hall's 500. Uh, I think Eddie Hall did 500 better than Thor's 501 uh, in terms of that discussion that they were having with Sebastian Oreb right before. Um, yeah, I think Eddie's was a smoother lift. But what I what I want to talk about more is the is the live stream is the event. Okay, so all of this is with. I, I'm not going to say this 10 times throughout, but, but okay, it's pandemic, you know, they can't be flying ESPN crews out there, rogue crews out there, or whatever. All that stuff aside, the live stream was so badly done and such a missed opportunity for strength sports. And that's why I'm so frustrated by what I just watched. So first off, when he's saying that he thought Eddie Hall's pull was better. The five, his 500 pull was better than Thor's 501. I tacitly disagree. Um, Thor's pull um, was better. Um, it was a smoother uh, pull, and he certainly seemed to be in more control in terms of um, you know not having to hitch quite as much. You know, Thor did a little bit of a ramp there um, at the end, but it wasn't this you know hitching that that Eddie Hall had had to do to finish out his lift. And then moreover, um, Thor was still standing when it was said and done and didn't need medical attention in the wake of the, uh, of the pole. So I think, I think Thor's pole is way superior. Um, and I think maybe Chad had one too many beers uh, when he said that. Now, uh, 
also he talked about the missed opportunity of the the live stream and how it was handled and for that i totally agree i think that um I think that Chad was correct in his uh, criticism of how that live stream was handled. It certainly wasn't uh, to the highest quality that it could be. Now, I know a lot of people say, well, we're just here to see the deadlift. I don't give a shit about the production value. And for many of us who are just interested in the lifting, you're right. None, but there's many of us that do not care about the production value of the presentation, right? We're just there to see the deadlift. Um, but... It was an opportunity for many, many, many people who are not into lifting or at least not as, as into lifting as maybe you or I might be um, to get hooked and get interested in the sport. So I really do feel like, um, like you know, uh, the people that were involved, not just Thor, because Thor probably had nothing to do with the production of the live stream and whatever else, or at least very little to do with it. Um, but I really feel like it was a, it was a big missed opportunity uh, from the people that were involved in this to really generate a lot more interest and really hook new viewers, new um, you know new eyeballs into uh, strongman and strength sport and things like that. So certainly, had they done a better job of production value, I think that they could have really piqued more people's interest. Whereas the live stream in and of itself was not that interesting, aside from the actual lifting. Really big missed opportunity there. And so for that, I, I do agree with Chad Smith on that one. Um, I uh, also want to talk about Eddie Hall, right? So Eddie Hall has come back and responded to Thor's, uh, you know, comments and, uh, you know, had a uh, IGTV post. So you can check out some of the things that uh, that Eddie says. Well, what can I say? Well done to half over Johnson today for lifting 501 kilos in his home gym. Genuinely, that's got my respect. From me to you four, big well done. I know what it takes. I still stand by what I say, whereas I think this should be done in a proper competition. Get rid of all that negativity. Prove everybody wrong. I see this here. I had this commissioned by a friend. And he said, what do you want on it? It says at the bottom here, first a deadlift, 500 kilos. I was never naive enough to think anyone would never beat this record, albeit in my lifetime. And I want someone to beat my record. So step up to the mark. Let's do it in the same circumstances. Let's get it in a competition and prove everybody wrong, including myself. Now, regarding your after interview, 1,000% I am going to sign those papers. Don't you worry about that. And do you want to know why I'm going to sign those papers? It's not the money. It's not this deadlift feud we've got going on. It's nothing to do with that. It's because you called me a cheat at World's Strongest Man 2017. I can't put it to bed. I've ne I can't forget it. People may forget it, but you've never you've never sort of apologised. You've never said it was right. You, you think... That you were stronger than me, Will Strongest Man 2017, regardless if the trophy's there or not. This is in your head. You think you should have won that year. And you let people know that. And I can't have that. I cannot have that. So that is why I'm going to sign these papers. Because I want to teach you a lesson. And that lesson is going to be me knocking you the fuck out. The, the whole tone of Eddie here is a lot more controlled and measured than some of the things that we've seen from him recently, right? Where, um, you know, in his comment where he talked about, hey, I just don't trust the Icelandics, um, you know, that was, I feel like that was Eddie Hall just like freewheeling, just, just speaking his mind, right? Where um, this kind of response and this video that, that Eddie did, I feel was a little bit more thought out, right? Like he wasn't just going off the top of his head. He had some thoughts collected, wrote something down, at least, you know, said it in his head a few times about how he was going to respond to things. Um, because it was certainly a much more, much more professional and controlled response from Eddie than we've seen him do recently. And so for that, I actually give him a great deal of respect um, from what I've seen recently. And this is just my own opinion. You know, Eddie Hall tends to just kind of pop off and just speak. Um, and he, he reminds me not too dissimilar from like the... Um, the old school carnival, uh, like criers, you know, step right up, the most amazing spectacle you've ever seen. And it, they, they sell whatever the thing is as being just so much bigger than life. And so now what I've seen from Eddie is the way that he speaks about himself and the things that he's done. He talks about, you know, the different facets of, um, you know, pulling the 500 and, you know, all these all these things that he's done. He talks about them in, in, in such a manner as though they're just bigger than life itself. Um, you know, previously he, he'd gone on a podcast and said that he didn't believe 500 kilograms would be broken in his lifetime. So listen to that. Uh, people say who else is capable of doing that? And uh, there is people capable, but uh, do you think anyone's going to pull for over 500 in, in my lifetime? I, 
at this point, I can't see it happening. I generally can't see it happening. I don't think that's going to be broken for a while. That's part. So now in this IG, this IGTV post that he says, he comes out and says, well, I was never naive enough to think that no one would ever do it. I was never naive enough to think anyone would never beat this record, albeit in my lifetime. You said it, man. Like, you, you, you actually said it. And it wasn't like, ha, it, you said it. And I think at the time, he was so impressed with himself that he actually did genuinely believe it. Um, only to find that that world wasn't the case. There were people that could catch him. Um, and that seems to be kind of the, the, what I see from, from Eddie Hinn. That's one of the things that I, I have a hard time swallowing as I listen to him as a, um, you know, just as, a, as an entity, right? It's just like his propensity to kind of, the, the, the spectacle, the showmanship. Now, I certainly respect it for what it, the necessity of it, because by him selling himself and you know putting some, himself out there, he has he certainly does draw attention to himself and presents opportunities for himself. So I, I understand the draw to do it. However, um, just from a distance looking at it, it just seems kind of cringy. Um, however, circle back around in this instance of Eddie Hall speaking, I I had way more respect for what he said and how he said it. Um, I think that um, I think that him taking some time to think things through before he says them um, definitely helps uh, the message that he's delivering uh, a little, be a little bit more palatable, at least for me. I don't know how you guys feel about it. Um, but, you know, talked about he's going to sign the contract and he's going to get in the ring with, uh, with Thor. And certainly this thing will end up going down some point in time. More than likely, you know, it'll be a little while out, um, not only just for, you know, the, the pandemic, you know, settling down and whatever on outs, um, but there's also going to be certainly a train up period where they're going to they're going to be doing some specific training and getting ready for it and um and you know the companies and people that are going to be involved are going to want to you know pump up attention for it and, and and make it a thing so certainly there's going to be a lot of time between now and the actual match uh, before things pop off but it will be interesting to see what happens when those two step in the ring um i think i personally think that eddie hall um has the advantage and probably will fare uh, better um, in the event. But obviously that a lot will depend on how those two train and, uh, and see what they do. At any rate, um, don't wanna draw this out any further than I've already got it, um, but I just kinda wanted to touch on the, the deadlift and a few things that I've seen kinda coming out. Um, I could have done this video you know, immediately following the deadlift, um, but I, I kinda wanted to see what else came out, what else would be said. I wanted to see, you know, Eddie's reaction. You know, I wanted some things to come out. And so I've given it, you know, a day to allow some of that to kind of happen before I put this video together. Um, but hopefully this video is kind of just interesting. You know, some different, uh, some different talking points um, about it. And so if you guys uh, have any questions, comments, or concerns, you know, drop them in the chat box below. I'll be sure to respond. I would also be interested to hear who you think will fare better in that boxing match. You think Thor will take him, or do you think Eddie Hall will win? Um, be interesting. <laughs> uh, yeah, it'll be interesting. We'll see how that goes. Uh, at any rate, guys, that's it. I uh, appreciate you continuing to support the channel with likes, shares, and subs. It means a lot, and you really help the channel grow, so thank you very much. If you've seen a video or two and haven't subscribed, I wish that you would. It'd be nice to have you around for a while. Remember, guys, no matter what it is you think you can't do, like, do something crazy, and set new records. You got to get in, train to spite. You're either going to find an excuse, you're going to find a way. And I hope that you continue to find the way. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Peace.